Wharton was a strange mixture of qualities, both as a person and as a writer. She would not normally take up much of our time in a consideration of the history of Lennox, but she was a keen observer of the Berkshire scene, a critic of social manners and mores, and a largely unrecognized forerunner of what was to be the massive literary movement called realism. Many superficial critics today dismiss Edith Wharton as a social novelist who wrote about the precious world in which she moved, a world which concentrated primarily on the right folks, the distress intended upon a refused invitation, the decoration of houses, and the making of marriages a la mode. She is more than this. Her two novels of the Berkshire scene were Ethan Frome and Summer. The former, probably her best known book at present, and the latter her least known. These two novellas for Ethan Frome is only really a very long short story. She called it a novella. Deal with a side of life which we would think foreign to the knowledge of this cosmopolitan lady. At home in the salons of France, the country homes of England, and the summer villas of Newport, Ethan Frome is a wintry novel. Even the name of its principal character has a harsh New England grimness to it. If we know Edith Wharton as the writer of The House of Mirth, The Custom of the Country, and The Age of Innocence, it comes as a distinct shock to read of the world in which she portrays in the book Ethan From, a book of hardship, deprivation, poverty, bleakness, almost beyond bearing. It has been a literary exercise uh, uh, since the appearance of the book in 1911 to try to solve the puzzle of how Mrs. Wharton secured her motor car huh, in her vastness of her Lennox estate. She could have known this other world. One but, um, Sarah has built herself a very impressive house here that shows so well up on the high hill. You can see the back um, views. Can you grab those in? Now, um, the lifestyle uh, that was carried on in these great houses, very much like an English country home. And the style of this house being a Jacobian revival home really harkens back to the time of Henry VIII in England, a copy of that. The house was never really meant to look new or modern. It was meant to be old and established. And it certainly pops out that sort of ostentation that was new and uh, just becoming a part of the American landscape. So now you'll see big houses and things like that. And all along, these would have been beautifully um, landscaped carriage rides. And Sarah certainly maintained the beautiful gardens and um, all of those things that you would expect from a very proper English home. Now, Sarah Morgan had three children, and she certainly meant the house to pass on from generation to generation. But that wasn't to be the case because Sarah Morgan passed away quite young while she was on a trip to Germany. And when the house finally was inherited by her children, already the Gilded Age was beginning to wane, and society had moved away from the maintenance of these ex very expensive estates, which required so many workers and so much labor and even so much to see and maintain them. And then uh, the country was falling into its sort of decline before the First World War. And then um, you just end up with a big, huge mansion that nobody really knew what to do with. Vimper Hall is certainly one of those stories. It eventually fell into complete decay as it was abandoned for 10 years and rain was allowed to come in.
Now behind me you see uh, what is the what these grounds are um, that I'm walking into now. Were where six large, very large greenhouses were, and they were all destroyed. And now uh, you can see that the story of the Gilded Age in Lennox is really about what what people can make of it and improve of it and just see if, um, you know, there's anything left to tell except for the story. And now we're going to follow down on the carriage road a little further on the estate and take a look at the carriage house, which is still standing. Certainly there's no re real reason for carriage houses anymore, but in the Gilded Age it was very important that you had a carriage house because that's what society was about here. Taking out your carriages, buying horses, you know, wearing the proper clothing while you're driving around, and being social. Social with the very important people that live on these um, estates that surround you. Sarah's neighbors on Kemble Street with Furlinghausen's, the Alexander's, there's Edith Wharton's home down the street, and further on the Patterson Estate, which is Blantyre, and on the other side of that street, that's Winhurst, the Sloan family, that marries so well into the Vanderbilts and makes friends with the president. So most of the visiting presidents are actually up at Winhurst. So now we're just walking down a carriage road and uh, down to that really impressive carriage house so standing on the ground, just waiting for, well, what will become of it? It's one of the very few of the large carriage houses that are still standing in Lennox. And it definitely harkens back to another time in Lennox where, where the lifestyle is just very different from what we are experiencing today. And I just want to grab that film and uh, make sure that you start to see it. Again, in the same style as the house, red brick. And, the, and upstairs here at the carriage house, there was the dormitories um, for the men that worked on the estate. The women that worked on the estate, they lived um, in the third floor of the mansion itself. And you can see it there. We improved it significantly. The beautiful keyhole facade again that matches the mansion itself. And there it is, the carriage house at Ventford Hall.